who likened its naturalism to that of Caravaggio and Guido Reni. Uh, Pacheco wrote, such is, such is Giuseppe Ribera's manner of painting that among all the great paintings owned by the Duke of Alcala, his figures and heads appear alive while the rest seem only painted. So if you consider that, that it was hanging probably alongside works by painters like, like Rainey, um, it, it's, an interesting, it's an interesting comment. Um, the, the painting of the bearded woman, Magdalena Ventura, was also part of this collection and went to Spain, uh, where it appears in inventories of the 1630s. Okay, so one more. Um, this one was created during the vice regency of M Manuel de Zuniga y Fonseca, the, the, the um, Count of Monterrey, um, who was ambassador to Rome before he became viceroy in, in Naples. Um, and this was uh, commissioned for the church of the convent of the um, Agustinas Recoletas, the barefoot Augustines, or the, sorry, the recollect Augustines in Salamanca. Um, I want to remind you that this gorgeous altarpiece was painted for the same church as the Assumption of the Magdalene, which is in the, um, in the exhibition upstairs. Um, um, painted for the same patron, for the same church at just about the same time. It, it's an interesting moment in Ribera's um, career because his palette changes a bit. I think you can see that pretty clearly even in a, a not so terrific um, slide. The palette's a lot, a lot lighter and a lot prettier. So the reason I've been showing you these, 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 these paintings commissioned by the viceroys is to give you some sense of, of what sorts of things were being commissioned in Naples and then sent back, um, back to Spain. And the sorts of things upon which Ribera's reputation in Spain um, was based. So the first works by Ribera to enter the royal collection were two paintings in the Salon Nuevo of the Alcázar. Um, these paintings were unfortunately lost in the 1734 fire that destroyed the Alcázar. Um, Ribera's um, Child and Cicera and Samson and Delilah are recorded in a 1636 inventory, but they probably date to the previous decade and maybe as early as 1626, so which would make them the, the, the earliest things we know of to, to enter the royal collection. These entered the royal collection in 1634 when Jerónimo de, Jerónimo de Villanueva, an agent of the king, um, bought this and three other paintings on the, the secondary um, art market um, in Spain. So they were already in Spain. The Ixion of 1632. This was um, for, the, for the Buen Retiro Palace. Okay, I've yet to mention the role um, Prince etchings had in spreading Ribera's reputation um, outside of Naples and um, indeed to, to Spain. Um, he had a very brief but intense interest in, in etching in the 1620s. And um, I think this can probably be explained by a practical consideration. He actually seems to have used them to broadcast um, knowledge of his achievements to um, potential clients outside of Naples and thereby uh, obtain um, painting commissions. Uh, six of eight of the figural prints can be related to existing paintings. 
and um, almost all of these date to before 1622, and then he just seems to have pretty much stopped doing it. There are a few later prints, but not very many. Um, this is one from 1621 that is, of course, based on the um, on the earlier painting that he did for the um, for the Duke of Osuna. Um, this is the, the one of the works that was in Spain by 16. 27. Um, and you'll remember this from upstairs as well. Really beautiful impression of, of this engraving is hanging upstairs, or this etching rather. And just one more. Um, this is his Martyrdom of St. Bartholomew from 1624. This one actually is dedicated um, to Prince Emanuele Filiberto of Savoy, who was a relative of the King of Spain, which is helpful. Um, and this is also upstairs, unbelievably. This is an incredible selection of Ribera's prints upstairs in the exhibition. Um, so these, these etchings were pretty widely circulated in Spain, and they were copied by painters. Um, I believe you have a uh, Carreña de Miranda upstairs that's based on a Ribera print. So knowledge of his, his work was pretty widespread um, by the mid-1630s. It's really not certain when his first, exactly when his first works arrived in Spain, but prior to the 1630s, they are rarely found in Spanish inventories. There's nothing by him in the 1623 inventory of the, um, of the Royal Palace of the, of the Madrid Alcazar. Um, but inventories that were drawn up in 1700, um, when Charles II died, list 75 paintings by, by Ribera. Um, I think there were 30 some in the, in the Alcazar alone. So over the course of, of 75 years or so, um, 75 paintings by Ribera entered the royal collection. Um, there's a sort of a, an intriguing archival notice that was published a few years ago that indicates that Ribera was actually um, invited um, to go to Madrid. He was invited to court and um, and the documents suggest that his departure was imminent. This was in 1643. Um, as far as we know, he never left Naples, um, which makes me makes me think of the uh, um, um, the 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 adage that appears in Giuseppe Martinez: you know, "He who is happy stays shall, should stay where he should stay where he is." Um, truthfully, there was very little reason for Ribera to go elsewhere. He was famous, he was well compensated, he was able to buy a villa with gardens for himself and his family in Naples, he was able to provide a very large dowry for his daughter. Um, one painting fetched as much as the annual salary of a priest, so you can imagine that he was, you know, he was sometimes working for um, commissioners who made less in a year than, than he did with, with one painting, which was kind of interesting. Um, so I, I, I think we can conclude, just to, to, to paraphrase, paraphrase Gracian, that Ribera knew how to transplant himself. Um, he was honored by his countrymen and by the foreigners among whom he lived. Um, he came from afar, and he was seen from afar, and um, I th therein lies a at least um, one of the one of the roots of his of his enormous and growing fame in the 17th century. Thank you. I'd be. I'd be very happy to answer any questions if you, if you have them. Are the galleries open, Carmen?
Go see the paintings. Go get really close to those etchings. Waiting, I'm waiting to hear from, from Iraida if she thinks this business with Gracian is completely wrong. <laughs> no. Not that I know of. Yeah. No. The text is really well known, but there are so many of these maxims. I, I around with it for some reason, reading reading a copy that I have at home, and I read this thing and I thought, oh, wait, Spain is the cruel stepmother. <laughs> yeah, we've talked about it a little bit. I, I wanted very much to have her read the talk before I came, but I didn't have anything. Yeah, that's yeah. It's just sort of, it's sort of <laughs> ironic that, that, you know, that, that Ribera goes off to Italy and he settles in a Spanish dominion. Yeah. They don't have any higher regard for... than Madrid. No, you know what, I think I'm going to try to go tomorrow. Yeah. 